In this video, I'm covering the calendar basics for the Fieldwork online calendar. So right now I have the calendar displayed with the map open in day view. And I also have the work pool list displayed. And first I'd like to explain the different settings that will impact how the calendar will work for you. So when you go to settings under company setup, you have calendar and time. The uh, work order statuses, work orders, and users and routes are all areas of settings that actually communicate with the calendar. So the first place we'll go is this users and routes, which I have open here. So when I'm in a user form, the, if that user has a route, all of the information communicated to the calendars in this lower right corner and it is here that I can choose to change the color plus I have the ability to add zip codes that I'd like to associate with this particular technician and I can choose whether the tech ends their day at the office or at their house and whether they start their day at the office or their house. So once I update the user profile it will communicate that change to the calendar page and my technician that I just updated will be there. And again, because I associated that technician with a specific zip code, when I use the filter within the route list for that zip, it will tell me what technicians are available for that area. So moving on from the users and routes section under settings and going to, let's go ahead and go to work order statuses. So the work order statuses, there are default options here with complete, flagged, missed, canceled, and scheduled. And then the option to add an unlimited number of custom work order statuses. So first off, the system statuses can be customized with a new color. So I'll go ahead and change that color. And the new statuses can be created with new names, identify with a new color, and then also have them behave like a scheduled, completed, missed, or canceled work order. So those color changes will change how the calendar is viewed. So if I go ahead and update this work order to complete, you'll notice that it will change to that kind of green aqua color. So the other option, so wherever that went, ah, uh, changed the date. Sorry about that. I have another option here that also changes the uh, work order date. My Apologies for that confusion. So when I updated that work order to a completed status, it also updated it to the current date because of a an option under the general work orders settings that will allow me to change the completed on date if I complete that work order, either from the online system or from the mobile app. If the original date was, let's say, yesterday or tomorrow, and I complete it today, when these options are turned on, it will automatically update the scheduled date to the current date. Another option in this page is to automatically mark anything that did not get completed each day at midnight to missed. So again, these all kind of tie into the work order status page and then how the system on the schedule page will behave. So the system can auto update that completed on date, auto update the color to a specific color, and also manage all of the different technician colors here plus on the map as well. So the technician colors are going to be displayed. And from this map view, this is a nice transition to discuss how the bulk move tool will function so I can use my shift key and my mouse in combination to select work orders from the map and then choose a specific route 
to move those two. So I'll go ahead and confirm that and the system will automatically update everything that I selected to that new technician. And other functions from this page are I have the ability to view the map and satellite on the current date. So if I go to today's date I can see traffic as well. So I'll go ahead and hide this uh, so I see the, the map in a more isolated area. And so traffic can be turned on or off, see current congested areas, and the map icons with the double-headed arrow will expand the map to a full page view. This bull's icon will display any work pool jobs that I have in this work pool list, or the mist list will display with the X in the circle. And the numbers in the circle correlate to the number in the list. When I select any point on the map that is already scheduled, it will give me a distance in either miles or kilometers based on where you're at on how far away these jobs are so I can effectively schedule anything that needs to be rescheduled from this list uh, using the drag and drop technology. So if I go ahead and use that list to then reschedule those jobs, it's pretty fast. So in day view of the map or of the calendar page, I have the ability to use drag and drop to move jobs from the work pool or the missed list and from route to route. I can also change the time frame. And like I showed you earlier, Use the bulk select tool from the map to move work from one day to another or from route to route. When I'm in week view, I can quickly move the jobs from one day to another and also from times. And then again, in the month view, I can do the same or I can move those jobs from one day to another, from week to week, and it will quickly move everything based on that month's view. Now uh, other options for this month view that are available in the main settings is if I go to, let's go ahead and go to the calendar and time section, I can hide the month leading and trailing days. Now that's in month view only so it's a great explanation is right here when I have jobs on the previous months it's hiding those from the calendar and from the map view and anytime you see the map view this uh, wide showing the whole world the jobs that are placed on the equator need their service address updated so the map is not able to pin those and it's pinning them on the equator then in the back going to this main section under the Click on or hover will depend on how you see the work order details. Double size calendar will allow you to see in day and week view um, the jobs that are in fact um, scheduled by 15 minute increments or if you don't use the double size it'll split it in 30 minute increments. So four sections per hour or two sections per hour. And then the display customer preference is a scheduling preference. Disabling all pop-up reminders will stop the system from alerting you of any schedule conflicts that you may encounter when you're using drag and drop technology. And then the start time and end time impacts how the schedule appears when you're on day and week view. So it starts at 12 a.m. And then if I am changing that view to be, let's say, starting at 5 a.m., then it will hide all of the hours between the night and 5. The ability to update how the system displays the customer information, so by default it shows the customer's name. So if I go ahead and save that and update this, refresh this page, all of my jobs will actually be displayed with just the customer name. And then by changing how this functions, I can, let's say, add the zip code and then the customer name and the customer account number and save. So that will automatically change how all of the jobs are then displayed and I can see clearly the information that's most important to me. So you'll see zip, 
customer name and account number. The final option on this are, are arrival windows. So right now I have those turned off and if I wanted to turn those on, I could have the system auto select, let's say I'll group them into two sections in morning and afternoon and I have the system auto select so that all jobs scheduled within the morning customers receive a notice that tells them I'll be there sometime between 8 and noon or the afternoon and then when I save that the system will automatically assign work orders based on when they're scheduled whether it's in the morning or the afternoon to those windows so Going back to this calendar page and the general overview, we have the map view on the left. We have the schedule in the, yeah, I'm gonna hide these miss jobs so that displays a little clearer. So you have the map view with all of the calendar functions, day, week, and month view of the calendar. You have the day's route production displayed for the office, driving directions, you have the schedule or the optimizer, daily optimizer for that route there. And then to quickly get to the current date, click the today button to navigate to past and future days or months or weeks. Use those arrow arrows. To create new work order, you could click this button or you can use the click and drag technology on the actual calendar page to create a work order for that specific technician on that date for that specific time. So it'll capture that information for you. And then the other options on this page are creating an estimate, a task, a new agreement, print the calendar, blocked time, print your service tickets. So if you'd like to complete them by hand, you can use this option to pre-print your tickets. Again, the search tool, so this will highlight all of the jobs in a specific area. The work pool list with the filter list, and then your route list as well.